In this video, I will show you how to make a scale bar on a north arrow. These elements are not altogether necessary if your audience is familiar with the orientation and scale of the terrain you are mapping. For instance, most Vermonters would know that north is up on this map of Lake Champlain. Also, it's easy to get carried away and make scales in north arrows that are gaudy and far too large. In general, it's a good idea to keep scale bars in north arrows simple and out of the way, and remember to consider whether you need one at all. But for this map, we're going to show you how to make a scale bar and a north arrow that's similar to the style of those on the historical maps that you've been looking at. To start with, I've gone to Google Earth and measured the approximate distance between Colchester Point here and Shelburne Point here. And the way that we're going to start making our scale bar is by drawing a line between the two of those and then manipulating that line so that we know the scale of this area. So I'm going to start by making a new layer move that up to the top and we'll call that scale and I'll make sure that all of my other layers are locked. I'll zoom in here, get the pen tool and then draw a line between Colchester Point and Shelburne Point. Now I know that that distance is 8 miles so when I drag that line down here I'm going to turn off smart guides just for the time being because they're sticking to the wrong things. I'm going to drag that line down here where I'll make my scale bar and take the rotate tool here and set the rotate center for right down here at that end of the line and rotate this down so it's roughly horizontal. So now I'm going to grab the pen tool again and make a line. I'm just going to eyeball uh, this end point to be roughly in line with the end point of that line we just rotated and I'm going to hold shift to make sure that this line is exactly horizontal when I click the other end point. Now we could just use this line which I rotated but if you zoom in really far you can see that there's still a little bit of a rotation to it. It's going to be impossible to get that line to be perfectly horizontal and that's what I'd like us to be building our scale bar on is a perfectly horizontal line. So I'll now just delete that initial one and now I've got a line that's roughly 8 miles long and uh, I'll work the rest of my scale bar around that. If I select this line and I do a little bit of cross multiplication I can find out that it needs to be 125 percent of its current size in order to be a line that's 10 miles long. So I'm going to select it and come over to this scale tool which I'll double click and I can scale this line uniformly to 125 percent of its current size. I'll select OK and now that line is long enough to be a line representing 10 miles on this map. And I think that 10 miles is a pretty good interval uh, for, for this map. The bar seems well proportioned for the size of the map. Um, you want to make sure that you're using units or intervals in your scale bar that are um, that are appropriate. So we wouldn't want to make a scale bar that's eight and a half miles long. No one really thinks in those intervals. 10 miles is a nice clean round number. So if this were a, uh, a more contemporary map, I might actually just leave my scale bar at that, maybe make it you know, slightly uh, larger in width, get a text box out, and simply write uh, 10 miles right above that and just call that my scale bar. A scale bar can be really simple um, and this is an effective way of making a scale bar especially for something like a thematic map where you don't need to be doing a lot of measuring with your scale bar. But because we're trying to go for a slightly more historical look we'll make a, a slightly more complex scale bar. We want to make sure that we don't make it too complex so that it's not drawing attention away from the map which is the real point of of making a map is for people to be looking at things like the rivers and the lake uh, which are the, the main features. Okay so we have this bar and we're gonna do this sort of black and white checkerboard pattern uh, like we've seen on some of the historical maps. To do that let's go ahead and scale this again uh, because we're gonna make each interval of that black and white checker a two mile uh, a two mile interval and that w means that we need to make a line here that's 20 percent of the size that our line is right now. It's now 10 miles and we want it to be 2 miles. So we'll scale the whole bar to 20 percent of its current size. There we go. And I'm just going to increase the weight of that line uh, to say how about 6 points. Right now that line has a black stroke and it has a black fill. It doesn't need to have a black fill. I'm going to turn that off because it'll make this next step just a little bit easier. 
And with that line selected, I'm going to go up to Object and say Expand. And I want it to expand both the fill and the stroke. The reason I turned the fill off is that it doesn't have a fill anymore. So that having that checked won't do anything and it won't create an extra object for us. But it's going to expand the stroke such that rather than that just being a line, that's now a shape. It's drawn uh, essentially a stroke all the way around that little box that we have. So now, in order to make our little checkerboard pattern of black and white in two mile intervals, all we need to do is come up and copy that little chunk that we just made, and then we will paste in front, once again we'll use that tool, and as I'm holding the shift key to move this over uh, so that it keeps being aligned with that original piece, I'm actually going to go turn the smart guides back on because they'll help us to move this. I'm holding the shift key again. They'll help us to move this so that this is snapping right to that line of the other one. I'm going to paste in place again or paste in front. Move that over so that it snaps right to the line there. I'll do it again with control F and a fifth time. So five of these pieces will be creating two miles, four miles, six miles, eight miles, and then ten miles. And then I'm going to select the three that are uh, on either end and then, whoops, that are on either end and in the middle and I'm going to give them a black fill. So now we have a black, a white, a black, a white, a black and I'm going to select all of them and give them just a slightly smaller stroke width. So there we have a 0.5 stroke width. Now we can just take a text box and label this 0, 4, 6. And we really only need to label the units on the last one because it'll be inferred that all of these have the same units. I'm just using the arrows on the keyboard to nudge these down slightly. And there we go. That's our simple our simple scale bar. I think those text boxes could even have text that are slightly smaller. Let's We just really want to make sure that that scale bar isn't commanding too much attention from the rest of our map. Okay, next I'm just going to show you how to draw a line and then put an arrow on the end of it in order to make a north arrow. So I'll take my uh take my pen tool, draw a vertical line. And then if I come over to the stroke panel, I can grab, uh, I can tell the line to be just a little bit larger in weight. And then I'll show you down here how there are these arrowhead options. And you can uh, select a particular arrowhead for either end of the line. I'm pretty sure that this is the top of the line, so I'll give it a shot. And if I come and select that, then it'll put an arrowhead on the end of my line. I can change the relative size of that arrowhead to the line and that that relationship is with the weight of the line so if I increase the weight of the line the arrowhead is also going to increase based on the percentage that I specify here so that arrow si that arrowhead size looks pretty good and that arrow can essentially be your north arrow you could put a nice little N on top of there with a text box and if you were getting really f fancy you could put a cross on there uh, to denote the direction of east and west. But once again, we want to really make sure that this north arrow isn't commanding too much attention in our map. The placement of the scale bar in north arrow is also pretty important as for how it draws attention to itself. So I might actually just make this scale bar a little bit smaller. Do that. Get the north arrow or the north label on top of it. This is a good opportunity to use the group function. I'm going to select all of those and then just right click and say group so that I can select them all as a single object. I'll do the same thing with the scale bar. And that way I won't be accidentally sort of pulling them apart. The scale bar, I want to make sure that I don't scale, but I will move it over here just because scaling it will, will change what it means. And then just put the, the north arrow right on top of it. Uh, they're centered on each other which gives it sort of a traditional feel uh, and they're they're out of the way and small enough that they aren't drawing too much attention.